heavy. Bored. If more people made that effort, <laughs> I think like workshops could be more constructive in a lot of it. So it's not just like praising your friends and then, you know, shooting on your enemies and enemies. We haven't even gotten to that, like workshop enemies, the dynamic with that. Oh, yes. <laughs> did, you, did you have any workshop enemies or? Uh, mm, kind of, not really. I don't know. There was this one who she, I think, like, thought of herself as being a really prolific memoir writer, but we were both poets and we were both on the poetry track. And then I joined the memoir, like, you know, there was like a class or whatever, and she had published a memoir before. So I think she thought of herself as like, she was different than the other poets. She was a memoirist or whatever. And then I was getting good feedback on the beginning of my memoir piece or whatever. It was like an auto fiction memoir. It's like whatever. And it was getting good feedback from like the teacher and from the other people in the class. And then all of a sudden she just like trashed me with like the most eviscerating personal <laughs> feedback that like one could ever get. And it was like, it was way too personal for it to just be about the writing. Like it was really intense. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. I guess maybe she sees me as like a threat because I'm also a poet and now I'm dipping my toe into memoir and maybe she <laughs> thought that was lame. I don't know. It's like people get really weird and territorial on MFAs as I'm sure you know. And so I was kind of like, but whatever, like I didn't hate her and like I still thought she was talented and like I never had problems with her. But yeah, her thing was so intense. And one of the things that she went after me on, which I've tweeted about before, I think, was um, in my piece, I mentioned going on a cruise to the Bahamas with my family when I was 14. And in real life, this isn't even in the story, it's not relevant, but just contextually, like that was like the first international vacation, international, you can call it that, you know, um, that me and my family had like ever gone on. We'd only ever gone to like Cape Cod before that, like whatever. And, you know, we'd like gone on a couple of road trips, but like, that was like the first time that we'd ever been on a cruise or gone to the Caribbean or whatever. But anyway, it was mentioned in the piece because the piece was like a memoir auto fiction piece that took place when I was in high school. And she, I forget exactly why it came up, but her feedback was like that I need to check my privilege. <laughs> because, you know, most people can't afford to, you know, go on a Caribbean cruise, da, 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 whatever. Like it was like, it was just so intense. Like I'm sure this cruise was not even expensive. You know what I mean? It was like maybe like $500 a person or something <laughs> like, oh my God. And also I know for a fact that this woman has lived in multiple countries, like globe trotting <laughs> lifestyle. And I just felt like that was someone weaponizing like that PC element of the workshop just because I was her workshop enemy in her eyes. I don't know. So like, yeah, things I've experienced things like that for sure. <laughs> yeah. And that, I mean, you know, and the part of that is, you know, what do you do about that? I mean, it is just like part of having this many people in a room trying to do it. Like the worst I would say I've ever seen was like, usually it was two people that, if they weren't a couple at one point, they were fucking at one point and then they stopped. I mean, you'd be like MFA shit. You're yeah. thrown into this situation. And for mine, it was like 22 people throughout both, you know, fiction and poetry sides. And it was like, well, we hung out all the time. I mean, you know, this is who you were drinking with. This is who you were partying with. So yeah, I mean, people, you know, relationships formed here and there. A lot of marriages formed out of it too. Like, but then there's like hookups and shit. And then when those two people get in the room and the workshop, and there's some feelings or resentment, whatever it is. And then the whole workshop becomes about the, <laughs> like this couple, like that <laughs> was like, they hate each other and we all have to sit there and like, listen to them, like dig into each other's shit, like horribly. And you're like, uh. Oh no, I, I was in a relationship on my MFA and we, after the course ended, like had the opportunity to be, and we were still together at the time, had the opportunity to be in a, like, external workshop together outside of the MFA. And I'm so glad that we didn't like kind of for that reason. I think even when you are still together, it's awkward, let alone like before you, you know, let alone after you break up. I mean, especially if you're um, writing about each I, other. Yeah. yeah. I just, I don't think it's good. Like, and of course these things happen on MFAs. People meet all the time, but 
yeah, no, I think that it adds, especially because you're all friends. It's so incestuous and everyone's kind of friends with both you and the other person. It's, it's not a great dynamic to be part of if you're both in the same workshop. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, what do we do about that too? It's always kind of like, how do you fix that? I mean, it's just something you have to deal with in terms of like dealing with a workshop and all that kind of shit. But yeah. Uh... Resources. American resources. It shows such a lack Heavy. of gratitude for life. Bored. I, I aspire to boredom, I should say. Bored. Heavy. I am heavy, heavy, heavy. Bored. Has you the night sweats and the day sweats, pal? Pal, I do.